Welcome to the Zen Leader with Laura J. Whether you're a leader at home or in the boardroom, Laura provides the tools to help you get unstuck in different areas of your life. Now, here's your host, Laura J. Welcome to the Zen Leader Show, helping you transform your life and find greater satisfaction and peace. I'm your host, Laura J., international best selling author and speaker, helping you find your happy. You know, that spot inside of you that feels calm and peace even when chaos is swirling around you. And my guest today on The Zen Leader knows that chaos, but she also knows that happy, calm, and peace. And I cannot wait for you to meet her. Hilda Larson, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Laura. It's such an honor to be here. I'm so excited to have you on. So much to talk about today. And I want to kind of give our listeners a little bit. You are known as the one that inspires. And just from reading your information, you do. You're so inspiring. And your story, I cannot wait for our listeners to hear your story. You're a certified health and wellness coach, author, raw food teacher, certified detox specialist. Your career started as an interior architect designing cruise ships, how fun, and hotels, and also co- <laughs> how fun is that, co-owner of an aerobics and <laughs> studio. You're glowing, <laughs> you get busy girl, your glowing enthusiasm for health and vitality has the leading role, of course, in all your work, online programs, publishing a series of books, you know, your first book, From Hell to Inspired, <laughs> I cannot wait to dive into that. That your complete story. We're going to talk about that from you being bedridden to living your dreams. That's huge. You know, uh, the yeah, second, yeah. One, yeah, know the truth and get healthy. We're going to talk about that. And you even have a third one, your most recent one, No More Bullshit. <laughs> I can't wait to dive into that. <laughs> so, Hilda, welcome to the show. And oh my gosh, you've been busy writing, girl. When, how long have you been writing? How long have you been writing? Well, this is for some people like, you know, when some people, you know, they are in labor for years and then right. others just say, oh, no, I just kind of popped right out of me and, and you just want to slap them. Right. Exactly. I, I actually just wrote those. <laughs> yes. I, know I those. wrote those books. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, I wrote the books in one year and I published them all the same year. So they just popped out of me. It was like my story. You know, all of it was me just needing to put everything down there. And it felt like I was challenging it. Challenging it. it was like I cha- channeling it. Channeling you know, you see, you see movies saying. of writers when they just, yeah, yeah you know, have yeah. you seen movies of writers when they just write and then they yes. sleep and then somebody leaves uh, food outside their door, you know, and they're quiet. <laughs> and then that, that, that was me. Like, literally, I like, I got up in bed, I, 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 wrote, I wrote and then I ate and then I slept. And that's what I, if I had to go to a birthday party, I was there for like one hour I started nodding my foot, like, okay, can we go? Please, you know, I, I gotta. Know. You, got, you got things that you had. <laughs> I you gotta had go. I gotta write. Bubbling up inside of you that you just had to get out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. love it. So let's go back a little bit. Your story, Hilda, is, a, is an amazing story. I, I know that you, you know, it sounds like you had a normal life and then you got sick. Tell me about that. Yeah. I mean, I was just a regular girl, you know, the regular, nice, high achieving, do everybody, you know, before yourself and, 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 right. and have the two kids and the picket fence and the car and the boat and the cabin in the woods and, and be this architect that runs around, you know, drinking alcohol on the weekends, high heels, you know, good shape, aerobic instructor. I was like all of it. I was this big picture of health and bomb, you know, ready to explode. So I was what you consider like the regular successful woman that was just not listening to her body like most people don't you know so I was just like going and pushing and pushing while I was you know experiencing ulcers I was experiencing you know not feeling that good I was getting a little anxious and I just started pushing and pushing and then bam you know I was so sick I was just so sick that I you know I I had to start um (laughs) I had to start masking off that you know going to the doctor getting medication you know I feel like this and I had a good doc I mean I had a doc I just went into his office and I just said can I have meds and he said what do you want so I just Mm -hmm. got on this wagon of just trying to get my life to where I wanted to be without my body agreeing on any of it you know, I was looking at my body as saying, you know, you're weak. Like, what are you doing? We're going to do all this. And now you're not going to let me down. 
so it was like me being let down of me, and I couldn't see any of it. At that time, I just couldn't see any of it. I was just so numbed down by me and my big ego and my, you know, life of trying to please everyone, trying to be, you know, serve everyone, that I couldn't see that my life was, you know, actually ending if I didn't stop it. And so, that, Hilda, how old were you when this started? 38. 38. Okay. So you were starting to get 38. sick and you're starting to ignore, you're ignoring your body going, we got things to do here. I, I can totally relate. Cause I know I did that exactly. too. Exactly. It exactly. It's like I went into the hospital. Yeah. Right. I, I went into the hospital. To I'm go. like, I told the doctor, I was like, got to go. Like, what are you going to do about this? I mean, seriously, give me something. I don't have time for this. But you know, that's I don't the, have time that's to the world. What am I going to do? And this is the worldly way we yeah. push, 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 right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And most so, people can relate to that, you know? Absolutely. So here comes your medicine cabinet just gets bigger and bigger. And then what? Oh my God. <laughs> right. And I was so eager to get the best meds and most of the meds and the most expensive meds, you know, just get those symptoms away. And I did, I started, you know, taking uh, shots that I had to take in my, into my own stomach. I was doing all these chemo drugs and everything they could throw at me at me so that I can get back on, you know, on my heels, drive around my convertible and just, you know, get my life back. I was a spinning instructor. Like I said, I told my doctor, I have things to do. And they were like, well, you know, give you all these meds. You'll be good. You know, no problem. I'm like, okay, well, you know best. And then I started getting anxiety. I started getting depressed. I got this itching everywhere. I mean, I got all these side effects. I started, I mean, my joints were fine because I was diagnosed with severe rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, I was told, you know, okay, so you're never going to walk regularly again and you're going to end up here and we're going to give you special aid. But hey, you know, take these drugs and you'll be fine. A lot of people live like that. We'll operate on you. You know, we'll fix your joints as you get older. Um, just so you know it, you know, it'll never be the same again. And I'm like, okay, well, okay. If they have meds, you know, we can do this. So I just, you know, kept on flying with the meds actually for several years until my body on the inside just started falling apart. I mean, really falling apart. It was like I had been to the worst party with the worst hangover and I just never recovered and I didn't even go to the party. You know, mm. it was like I didn't go to the party and I had to live with a hangover all the time. I'm still dragging my feet on this. I'm thinking, okay, I got to, you know, lay down my business, got to give it all up, cried a lot of tears thinking, okay, that's it. I'm stressing too much. So I go back to university and I study journalism and I couldn't even see that I was still just pushing and pushing and going and going, you know, not listening to my body. Not and still ignoring, still ignoring your soul yeah. and your body that's screaming yeah. to be heard, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Screaming mm -hmm. so hard. And that is what I find with a lot of strong women. Yeah. What saved me is the same thing that nearly killed me because we're so strong in the sense that we just never give up. You know, even if it's killing us, we just don't give up. You know, we just, we never give up. It's so true, right? <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> we got things to do. People I know. Don't care of. They, I know. You know people are like we're being chased. Us. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. we're being chased. Like someone's, you know, at our back chasing us. And that's kind of what it felt like, you know? So I'm doing all of this and then I'm just getting so sick. I'm just getting so sick. I'm in and out of hospital. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm admitted for anxiety attacks. I, they think it's the heart. They think it's this. I'm there for two weeks. I'm there for three weeks. AKG, DB, everything you can imagine, you know? And, and they just, and I'm thinking, you know, this, is, this isn't this is right. All these meds, all this, this isn't right. I can't live like this. I mean, I was so depressed. I was so, and that wasn't me. I mean, I couldn't even remember feeling any of that. I just didn't feel like me anymore. <laughs> Whatever me that was. Whatever but me that the was. The only me that I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The me that I knew. So I, you know, I, I just couldn't. And I kept on going and I kept on going until one day I just sat down in the living room. I looked at, I looked at my husband. He came home from work. I remember so clearly. It was actually March 7th, 2007. I sat down and I told him, I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm quitting all the meds today. I mean, I'm stopping everything, everything. And I'm going to lay down right here. I'm going to stop school. I'm, going to, I'm just going to shut down everything. And I'm going to lay here until one out of two things happen. Either I get healthy or I die. And I don't care which. I re and I really didn't care which. I mean, actually, I was hoping for the, for the last one. I mean, sure. I, was, I was telling You're God not. every night. I mean, please. Take me you know, home. Please. Right? I mean, another day. I mean, please. Can we just be done with it? I mean, for real? Enough pain already, you know? 
so I, that's what I did. And that's what I did. And you know what? That's the freakiest thing because then my body was showing me how sick I really was. When I stopped every med that, you know, were taken to numb the symptoms to kind of just suppress whatever was there, you know, every, sig- every signal the body was trying to tell me, yeah. then I got really sick. That's what left me in bed for several years, so inflamed I couldn't even open my mouth. I couldn't even, I mean, I had to be carried to the bathroom. It was like. And so all of this, Hilda, was the start of rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. So they diagnosed me with also with Lyme's disease, Mm. and I have several ulcers. But the rheumatoid, I mean, I tell you, when they, if you first suppress that, I mean, really suppress it and then go off all drugs, it's going to hit you like a truck from behind. And the body is going to really show you how inflamed you are. You know, I'm talking hip, knees, toes, finger, shoulder, elbow, neck, jaw. You know, I mean, there wasn't a, there wasn't a one joint in my body that wasn't swollen to the extent where it couldn't be bent even. Amazing. So, we're gonna, Hilda, we're going to take a quick break right now and come back and finish. Talk more about this amazing story of, of recovery, resilience and recovery. And it's just incredible. And we'll be right back. break. I'm Laura J with the Zen Leader and you can find me here at wsrqradio.com or laraj.com, L-A-R-A-J-A-Y-E.com. And here with me is an amazing woman, resilience. Oh my gosh, resilience and recovery, um, Hilda Larson. And, and Hilda, right before break, we were talking about your story. Um, please continue this story. You're bedridden now. You've got rheumatoid arthritis, Lyme's disease, Auto, lots of, so these are autoimmune diseases, correct? And uh, mm-hmm. that are mm-hmm. attacking, you know, uh, I cannot wait to talk about just autoimmune, <laughs> but, but keep talking mm-hmm. and continue mm-hmm. on with your story mm-hmm. of, of what happens now that you're, yeah. you've stopped everything, you're laying in bed going, okay, now what, <laughs> right? Exactly. Like, now what? Now, now, now what? I now do. what? Yeah. And luckily I got myself like the first McBook that came out in 2005, I think it was. That's what I just got. So the first me what? and the internet. Oh, the internet. The, and MacBook. A laptop. laptop. Yeah. Okay, got it. So yeah. it was, yeah, yeah. So it was me and my Mac. That was it. <laughs> and in bed. And then luckily I had a husband who could make, bring me food. So he brought me food when he went to work and I, he brought me food again when he came back. And then he, you know, took care of me, helped me to the bathroom and blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, I, I had no idea where to stop, but I had this calling from within. I had the spirit talking to me saying, Hilda, you were born healthy and you can be healthy again. It's natural to be healthy. It's natural to be healthy. You know, you got to look to nature. It's natural. This isn't right. And no, your body isn't attacking itself. It's not stupid. The body wants to live. It wants to survive. It's trying to tell you something. You got to listen, you know, and, and I had to learn all these lessons. I had to learn about patience yes. you know i knew about diligence because i've been driving that truck towards the world for so many years so i i know i knew about persistence i knew about being strong i knew about all these things but i had to learn the opposite i had to learn about patience and how the body really work you know it's not about popping a pill that's going to fix everything it's not about a chemical it's about the letting the body heal so i was just going through everything you can even imagine i mean every diet out there everything i mean killing the parasites i bought every equipment out there i just went you know spent all of our savings trying you know, to figure out what is going on and the more i learned and the more i learned i craved to learn and i educated myself i even went through uh integrative nutrition i got certified as a health coach while i was still working on myself just because i was craving knowledge i was just digging through everything until i finally got to the point where i felt like i got it and the way that i got it was not the way that i thought i would get it i i got the point where oh my god it's simple oh my god you know the more the more i learn here the more i see that we need to declutter all of this I mean, I'm just following one teaching and then one teaching and one teaching. I had found, you know, not another doctor, but another teacher I, and another teacher and someone else take my, you know, attention away to walk towards instead of 
going within me. Just and they all me, tell us something oh my God. different, right? Hilda, they all tell us something different. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. we're still not listening to ourselves, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And when I was at Integrative Nutrition, we had to go to 101 different diet plans for philosophies. And you know what? Every speaker would have had you. They were so persuasive, everyone, and they yes. believed in what they were saying, you know, so everyone, and I was like, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, you know, they suck you in and that's, you know, and then, but, you know, to be fair, you know, you learn from everyone. I just learned, you, you know, do, that's right? another thing I learned. It's like, listen to all, learn from a few, follow no one. Right. But, and every, I feel so, like every body is different. So that may have worked for them. Don't you feel like, you know, each of us have our own, you know, innate wisdom. And I, hate, I, I, I love that. I love that to say that because no and yes, meaning yes, we are different in the sense that we all have different weaknesses, experiences yeah. from the past, a different limb system, you know, a different um, strength of different organs. But in terms like every other species, we can be more identical. I mean, you can do an mm-hmm. autopsy on any human. They'll look exactly the same. I mean, what's the difference? Why do we think we're so different? It's only because we have different weaknesses, you know? So I was starting to untangle my emotional state. I went through all of that, the forgiveness and the gratitude, listened to all from Louis Hay to, you know, Doreen Virtue and, and Wayne Dyer. And I just dived into my soul. And that's when I found my path. Now, I was, I was walking through my healing saying, show me the way. Thank you for this healing. How can I serve? So the minute I started looking at myself as a server instead of being a pleaser, as a woman that was already healed instead of searching for an answer, looking to nature for simplicity instead of complexity, instead of looking at vitamins and minerals and nutrients and what should I do, stepping out of that saying, hey, you know, this is so perfect. Look at an apple. You just eat it, taste it, poop it out. It's all good, you know, (laughs) fast food. So I just, that's that's how I came to my my sen is going through all that learning, all that knowledge, you know. And, of course, now I see it with my clients because I I see why I had to go through that. Because all that knowledge, of course, you know, knowledge is never in vain. That's what I say. It's just, you know, it just matters on, you know, how you apply it and, and how you use it in your life. But it's never in vain. I mean, knowledge is always gold. Um, Paul's beliefs, of course, can be um, tricky. But, but yeah, so, so that's where I ended up. <laughs> I, I ended that. up. You ended up here. And I love that you said you, you would say, show me the way. Thank you for the healing. How can I serve? You know, instead of... Um, you know, whining about it, or I'm sure you went through that stage as we all do when we're, you know, hit with something, (laughs) but, but it was show me, you know, show me the way and how can, and you start looking within instead of outside of yourself. I mean, you started out, we all start outside, get the information and the knowledge. We need that, but then it's okay. What do you want me to do? What can I do with it? And, and from that you've created. And also the, yeah. And also the, the letting go of the outcome of that, because it's like when you say, show me the way, it's not like you're saying, well, please show me the high heels. They're red and they're size eight. You know, I need to wear them by Thursday. We have a tendency, or at least I have, to, you know, exactly know what I wanted in life. And I just wanted that to be fixed. Like, please, God, fix that. I need to get in my car by next Wednesday because I got to go there. Now, all of a sudden, I was so stressed. I was so naked. I mean, I was so naked and I had been polishing you know putting pillows around me everywhere you know by how I look I looked fab I was fit you know I had a lot of friends which I you know found out later they were drinking buddies not really friends um and that showed me a lot about myself you know so you you meet yourself so vulnerable at the end and when you're so ready to die so so it was like the real story of recovery for me or or my passionate new life or now calling myself most of all actually a life enthusiast was when I was really ready to die when I really just let go and laid back and said show me the way not here I need this or pray for this I want to pray for me to be healthy so I can no show me the way because you know what we don't even know what's best for us 
or what we need because we only know what we know and we only know like a very 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 small part of every possibility that's out there and we don't even know half of our, our greatness our grandness and i had no idea that i was gonna you know someday be standing in peru speaking for in front of the uh president <laughs> you know mm. and i had no idea i was just laying there felt i was gonna die and the last thing i did was being an interior architect doing hotels so that was like the turning point when i just laid down not just my body but my soul not just my body on the bed saying hey i'm gonna lay here you know until this happens that kind of was my ego just ready to do a little suicide you know but when you're ready to just surrender with your whole being that's when magic comes through I love that. And Hilly, what my, one of my favorite chapters is the letting go of the outcome chapter in this most recent book. And because that just, it really spoke to me and that we, we can have these amazing visions and, uh, you know, want this health. And these, these are really good things, not just for us, but to help other people, but the how and the when and what it's going it, to, it's not up to us. No, it is it. And 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 see the thing we the thing we usually do with that information, like when you're saying it right now, I bet that there's a lot of people that have a little eh inside of them, thinking, well, first of all, there's law of attraction, and right. you know, it's we're creators, so we of course we're going to create what we want. And what are you telling me? I want to, you know, I I should work on my business. That's what I'm going to do. So we're kind of putting that whole energy into something that's so filled with thought that we automatically go into thinking that if we let go and the outcome be as it may, that it will not be as grand as the one we thought, or that it will not go in the direction that will give us the same joy that the one that we already figured out with our mind. And the thing is, once we let go, the law of attraction really sets into play because then it is flowing towards you when you stop chasing it and you get to live your full potential, which we, with our brain, at least I, this is what I believe, we, we, we have no idea the extent of our potential with our minds, I mean, with our intellect. And I realized how small I was in my grandness and how insignificant I was in my grandness. When I, when I saw that, it just didn't matter anymore. It's like if I lived or died, it didn't matter that much. I mean, we were here and then what, 70, 80, 90 years if we're lucky and then we're not here. It's not that big a deal. It's really not that big a deal. Our lives are not that big a deal. But on another sense, it's a great deal, but we're, we're, we're eternal. We're, we don't die. I mean, our souls never die. We're, we're, we're spirits here living, having a physical experience in the body and once I saw that I saw that I was so much more than this life it was like phew oh thank god you know Takes I, thought the pressure so, off. I thought it was like so <laughs> I, I thought it was so it. important that it isn't and it's not what a concept yeah. oh, I love it it's not. <laughs> well we're going to take a break right now we'll be right back to continue this amazing conversation with Hilda Larson Welcome back. I'm Laura J with the Zen Leader. And again, you can find me here at WSRQRadio.com or LauraJ.com. And Hilda Larson, my amazing guest. Hilda, if people are looking for you and they're, re they're, they're hearing your message and they want to hear more or learn more about you, what is your website address? Well, my website address is inspiredbyhilda.com. Now, I write my name Hilda with an E. I'm Norwegian, so it's Hilda. Hilda. And that's the only thing I always have. To, Hilda. So it's Hilda. Hilda. Okay. So inspire uh, the word I N S P I R E D and then the by B Y and then H I L D E, yeah. correct? Uh, dot com. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So if any so, of our listeners. And I'm that you. everywhere. You know. Great. Yeah. And everywhere I'm like that. So it's easy. Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. You inspired by Hilda. That's it. Fabulous. Fabulous. So the amazing, yeah. amazing story, Hilda. I love talking to you about this. And I want to, um, before we dive into 
really what you did um, to heal. I want to talk for a minute about just autoimmune in general. It seems like that's all we hear about now. And so many people are coming down with it, even from little yeah. ones to older ones, you know, yeah. so, so many have yeah. the, the Hashimoto's and the, um, you know, the, the thyroid issues, the, the RA, the Crohn's, you know, there's ha- probably a hundred autoimmune, Lyme disease, all of them, the ones that you had and many others have. What, what is your personal opinion, your take on what has happened? What is happening? Yeah. Okay, so autoimmune, first of all, I got to start by saying this. Autoimmune is, per date, another way of saying, we don't know what the heck's wrong with you. (laughs) Or we can see your symptoms. Mm -hmm. We can see your symptoms, but we have no idea why it's happening to you. So the body must be doing it, like attacking you, because we have no idea why it happened. So... All they do is they take a part of the body saying if it happens, this part of the body, we call it this. Happens over here, we call it this. Happens to your joints, we call it this. But in terms, it's inflammation and it's chronic. That's what it is. So the word doesn't mean that much to me because I was so autoimmune up. My body was going to kill me for the rest of my life. Well, guess what? My body is not only getting more and more radiant, I look and feel younger every single year. Because what I discovered was that when we step away, again, surrender to nature, step away from everything that we are putting into our body that is filled with crap and shit and pesticides and herbicides and process and, you know, and we can go into meat and dairy and all of that. And I don't know if this is going to be like a whole (laughs) <laughs> eating thing, but the thing is this <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the thing is this when you stop feeding the body what it is reacting to and i'm not only talking food here you see i'm talking thoughts i'm talking emotions i'm talking stress i'm talking environmental i'm talking about your life i mean it's not only about what you're eating it's what what's eating you so there are many sides to that, when, but, but not tracking off the autoimmune. Autoimmune to me is nothing. The word means nothing. It's a trap and it's fake and it's going to keep you into thinking you can never get better. Stick to the symptoms. Stick to the body. Because what the body is showing you is that you have a lymph system that is not properly draining and filtrating out the crap. Because that's why we get achy and painy and inflamed and full of what we don't want is because our drainage system is really not working. I mean, one thing is the blood. It's easy to understand that because we're, we're taught, you know, to look at nutrients. We're so busy with what we can get in. It's like we're swimming with our hands going, you know, towards us, like, give it to me, give it, give it, you know, like supplements, give it here, give it here, you know, this, I can take this for that. Same philosophy as the pills, you know, and, and, and chemicals. But the thing is, we have three times more lymph in our body than blood. And that's the sewer system, the sewer system. And it's not filtering. It's not open. We're so, you know, our our kidneys and our intestines and our livers and our lungs and every eliminated organ is so impaired only by genetics also, you know, because I see, this is what I see. Have you, I mean, when I grew up, we didn't even see one person in kindergarten having allergies or asthma or diabetes. Right. And now, mm-hmm. for God's sake, they're born with cancer. Mm-hmm. So we're handing this shit down to our little ones, you know. And this is why we're seeing so much of it now, because they're bathing in our lymph system when we carry them in our womb. And then they're getting all that. And then we, they come out and we put, you know, all that process into them. And the mother is feeding them breast milk, not healthy herself, you know, passing it on to that little one. So that's the whole, you know, baby and, and, and they're getting weaker and weaker. And we know what I say. It's kind of crazy to say that. But I think if we keep going, what we're, we're doing, what we're doing right now in, in two or three or four, five generations, we're hardly going to be here anymore. You know, we got to wake up. We got to wake up and just take charge. You know, we got to cut the bullshit, you know, and, and start listening to our own logic because we keep following the shiny object, even if it's logic or not. 
So if somebody's telling you your body's attacking you now, it started yesterday at noon, and you're like, oh, it is. Oh, my God. What can I take for that? Oh, take the blue pill. Like, oh, okay. You know, and then you look to nature, and I'm like, oh, there are no autoimmune in nature. No. So all the other species, they don't, get, they don't have it? No. So every animal out there, there is no arthritis and no diabetes, nothing. Amongst the animal world? No, only amongst the animals that you see, darling. Like, oh, oh my God, said no one, you know? <laughs> so to me, it was like waking up to just cutting away everything that had to do with, uh, what should I say? Like, in, like a false respect for authority. Because I don't want to say that, you know, we should never, you know, listen to authorities because that, I mean, you have children and then, you know, sometimes. But still, we are stubborn beings. When you're an adult, you're a stubborn being. So listening to authorities can get you into really, really, you know, bad trouble, <laughs> which I did. I mean, it nearly killed me. And, and, and I mean, to be honest, it's killing a lot of people every single day, sadly. Not, you know, that people are not stepping up and taking care of ourselves. And that's another thing. And that's what I need every day. The hardest, hardest, hardest thing for a human is change. You know, not only change that is happening because of some outside force, but changing ourselves. It's like we just, we would rather stay stuck in pain and living a life that's hurting us than change. And what, that's what- Why do we do that? That's so true though, right? And no, that's what's fascinating me most of all. So that's what I work most of when I speak to people. One thing is going into the detoxification process because it was clearly what saved my life. Understanding it, being diligent, really stepping into eating only raw food. I stepped into nature, you know, figuratively speaking, of course, because I still live in a house, but I stepped into nature. I just took back what was mine. I looked at nature and I'm like, oh my God. I'm a primate. I, I, you know, look at my salvia, look at my stomach acid, my teeth, my hands. Look at that. I'm a primate. I'm supposed to pick and eat. That's what I'm supposed to do. And I'm not born with a cooker up my butt, you know? And I'm <laughs> going to look here and say, like, where do I get my protein? And I'm chewing on the leg of a cow when I ask that. And then, oh, the cow that got all that protein, all that big muscle, what did he eat? Oh, grass. Oh, forget about it. You know, I'm not thinking logic, you know? So it was like, I got this whole I didn't even need to read about it anymore because I just looked at me and I'm like, oh my God, I went straight to the source. I just bypassed everything. The doctors were yelling at me, tell you're killing yourself, you're killing yourself. I'm like, fine, you know, because at least I will do it from my heart, you know, and, and, and I never, you know, I knew I would never do that. And I knew I was just so secure in that. I, I, I knew that I was provided for. I knew that what, what I was listening to was source. It was God. It was me. It was my higher self, whatever you want to call it. I knew that the whole time, and that made everything so easy because now I didn't have to chase what everybody else was thinking. I could just look around and see valuable information, which, of course, I gathered. And yes, of course, I've had many mentors, and I learn every day. But I was done following blindly anything. I always run it by me first. I love that. Run it by you first. And we're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back with Hilda Larson. We are all looking for happiness. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter under Ms. Lara J. M-S-L-A-R-A-J-A-Y-E to find your own happy. Welcome back from break. I am Laura J with the Zen Leader here on WSRQRadio.com. And you can find my amazing guest, Hilda Larson, on Inspired by Hilda, H I L D E.com. Hilda, I, I love this conversation. I'm just, I am so uh, <laughs> excited about, the, about your information. And, and so basically, to heal from your, from all the things that they said were wrong with you and you were bedridden, you started into, you step back into nature, raw foods. And, and I want to talk about fruits and veggies. Uh, one of your, um, a couple in your book and also in your, your website, you talk a lot about, about fruit and, you know, we're told now don't eat fruit, too much sugar. Uh, mm. I want to hear your take on this. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you know, really that saddens me it does, because that right? tells me that, you know, that someone is keeping us away from our healing food. 
and I'm mostly saddened for our children. I have grandchildren, and I, from the minute they could, you know, sat around my table, you could put anything in front of them and put fruits in front of them together. They will, they will, they will reach for the fruit every single time without exception. The children knows what to eat. The thing is, if you tell the child what's on their plate, if they're not, if they're not eating plant-based food, they will burst into tears. They will tell you you're stupid and to stop it. So this is, you know, these are our new teachers. But the fruits, you see, every cell in our body runs on sugar. Every cell. If you don't get sugar to your brain, you're not thinking anymore. If you don't get sugar to every cell of your body, you have cut up the main source of fuel. That's our carbon. That's what we call carbohydrate. Now, if you go over to the other side thinking I'm going to restrict that, I'm going to eat a lot of fat and a lot of dead animals instead, you know, your body is so willing to survive, it will transform some of that fat into sugar because it, could, it, could, it, it has to. If not, it will die. So what I have seen, I've even helped people get over their diabetes by eating sugar, high sugar fruits only. And no, I'm not a doctor. So this is a disclaimer. No, don't do anything of this at home. You know, get a coach, get a, someone that knows what they're talking about if you have an imposition and, and, and you want to get through that. So don't do that. And don't stop your medications uh, on my account. So this is just my, my experience. But, but the thing is, the, the fruits, they, they're, they're the perfect food for man. And I could go into a lot of reasons. I will go into a short reason because people, people get this. When you look at how we're made, we have the teeth, we have the salvia, we have the, the intestine, which are like, yay, seven feet long, uh, all made to eat and digest fruit. If you find an animal like a dog or a um, lion that are carnivores, or actually a dog is omnivore, say a lion carnivores, they're made to eat meat. So they have a very short intestine, like a feet long, because once it gets in, it needs to get out, like right away, or it's going to putrefy, it's going to rot, and it's going to be hello, parasite. So this is what we're seeing today. We're so filled with parasites that people, they eat fruits on top of their fats and on top of the other carbs, the processed carbs, like the baked goods. And everything turns into this mash of fermentation within the body. And yes, the blood sugar is going to go up. Yes, you're going to get bloated. Yes, you're going to get weight gain. But it's like, don't blame the fruit, honey. It's like, it's the body. It is because the body isn't cleaned out. It's not functioning right. It's not the fruit. The fruit is the perfect food. And you know what? Myself, I went from eating everything. I smoked 35 cigarettes a day. I was drunk every week. Well, it sounds terrible, but you know, I went to a party every week or, you know, at least got a little buzz, something. Sure. I, like the regular person, I, I ate everything. I lived up a, I love cheese doodles and Diet Coke. And that was like my go to food almost <laughs> every night. And I went from that. And then I was just guided at the same time, you know, same thing. I went through all of a sudden I was vegan. I didn't even know it was that. The interesting thing is all of a sudden I'm at raw food, right? So I'm just eating raw food. And, you know, which is good. It's amazingly good, you know, but I was still eating a lot of nuts and seeds and it can be heavy. It's high on fat and, you know, it's not cleansing food. It's a great, you know, diet to just sustain health if you already have it, but the body will not get into doing the cleaning until it really, you know, get the astringency in there and gets to dig deep. So I was just led to go on. I was leaving the greens, not even thinking about it. One day I'm like, oh my God. They're like, you don't eat salads anymore? I'm like, I guess I don't. And that is, what is it? I think it's almost five years ago. I, I've only ate fruit. Oh, so you, and don't, now eat, you I don't, don't even to... eat salads. You don't eat lettuce. No. Oh, wow. Okay. No. Okay. I know. I know. Wow. That's, that's But great. the thing is, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, but, but I can't, and I will. I'm like, you, you can't eat that? I'm like, yeah, sure I can. And it's not that long ago that I was cooking for my vegan son, and, you know, I thought, oh, these spinaches look really good. I'll, I'll get some of these. And I did. And I put it in the fridge and I just sat there until I had to throw them away. I'm like, oh, yeah, I just keep forgetting about those. So it's not like, you know, I have any, and, and I think they have a great place. And a lot of people, I think, need the really, you know, the mineral boost. And especially in the beginning, because the thing is, this is 
this is a journey and it will be for everyone. If you're eating a sad diet today, is what we call it, like the standard American diet, a sad diet, if you jump right to fruits, your body is going to try to expel so much crap from within you that you're going to feel it to the extent of it not being almost safe all the time, right? So I call it, we, you know, responsible detoxification. And, and what, you what need would to, you recommend for somebody who's just starting out on that? What would you say to them? Yeah. Well, I would say two things to them. Number one, add in more of the good stuff leave out more of the bad stuff. The bad stuff being number one, always highest on the list every, every time, dairy. Believe it or not, dairy, dairy, dairy. Why? Number one, the protein caffeine cannot be broken down by the human body. It is so mucus forming, it literally coats your intestines. And that's where we're supposed to take in all our nutrients. And you know that you know, you can feel the slime like in your mouth when you drink, you know, drink milk. It's like, you know, and that's the parasites in it. I love it. So you just, you're, you're like an open house party for parasites. So I would say if you can leave the dairy and then start working on leaving everything that's processed. Cause, and, and you know that if you look to nature again and get to that, okay, I'm going to look to nature now. I'm going to listen to myself and I'm going to go logic. And then I go to the supermarket. I'm like, these boxes have been sitting here for like three years. Mm -hmm. Powder. Mm -hmm. Wonder what's in there. I don't know. I can't even read it or I can't pronounce it. So if you can't, if you don't know what it is, don't eat it. That's like number one, like leave out the bad stuff. And number two, see if you start introducing good stuff to the body, it will wake up saying, I want more of this. So I am encouraging everyone to start every morning with a good juice and fruit. Like the breakfast. It's breakfast is Number one meal, I could say, and then I'm saying a little too much because actually I want us to almost skip breakfast just because it's better to fast longer, but that's another story. But when you start eating, whenever that is, the body has been cleansing or trying to cleanse all night. So all these toxins that are accumulating in the body really needs help to get out. So the lighter you can eat in the morning, meaning more fresh fruits and juices you can get in there. The whole, you know, you're going to make a whole difference in your whole day and your body's going to start creating more of it. So after a month of that, you're going to start thinking, oh my God, I wonder if I'm going to do just like a whole juice day this weekend. Oh my God, what am I saying? Where'd that come from? And it's the juice that's working in you, you know, and the cells are crying saying, give us more, give us more. And then you'll be inspired to let out more shit to say, you know what? I'm going to stop eating bread now. And I'm going to get my, you know, a good salad for lunch instead of those sandwiches that I have. So it's a transition for a lot of people. So if you don't come to me with like a stage four and, you know, really, if you're in really, you know, if you're in trouble, you need to reach out to someone that, you know, that are a detox specialist or a life coach that can guide you, of course, through this. But if you just want to feel better and you have aches and pains and, you know, you're feeling, you know, I can do this. I just want to change a little bit. I want to do better. Then that's what I would do. I would transition slowly so that I could feel it within my body what was happening because I see people starting to cleanse just from changing breakfast so just from changing breakfast all of a sudden you have a runny nose like oh my god I have a runny nose what should I do I'm like bravo you know right you're stuff coming out of your head <laughs> let yeah it, let it yeah, flow. stuff coming out of your head yeah oh exactly gosh. so and that is a learning curve which I mean most of us we do better in the long run when we have learned on our own body, when we have learned through experience, not through reading a book. So my books are not, you know, for you to start doing everything I did because I did what I did when I had been doing a lot of other stuff for years. Right. But what I want you to do to be is to be inspired to start your journey and to get on board, you know, to, of course, jump on one of my courses or listen to me speak or, or, or sign up at, you know, one of my programs just so that you can experience your journey towards amazing health. Because health, you see, it's not about not having symptoms. Health is not about not having pain. Health is just way beyond that. It's about having so much energy and enthusiasm about life that, you know, you would never even think about needing any stimulants anymore or running towards food or anything else to kind of numb your feelings because you'll be so excited just to be here. It's, it's, it's almost like people are thinking, well, can you be like that all the time? I'm like, heck yeah. 
do I do I experience you know ups and downs? Mm-hmm. Sure, you know I'm human. I mean, do I bang my toe into a table and say shit? Of course, <laughs> right? But this, oh, Hilda, you know, but the thing is, our time is up. But I love talking to you, and I so thank you so much for joining me today, Hilda. This has been amazing, and uh, well, thank, thank you for having me. And I talk a lot. I love it. I talk. I I'm like I'm like so excited. I love that you talk a lot, and I I am so excited for our listeners to find you on Inspired by Hilda H I L D E dot com, and and thank you, listeners, for joining us today on the Zen Leader and for all ongoing inspiration, of course, go to laurajay.com. And until next time, choose happy.